Welcome back to the shop. I'm Kirk Anderson. Now in this video, I'm going to be making a bird feeder. Now this bird feeder is specially designed for the beginner woodworker. Let me start out by saying this video is going to be a bit different from my normal videos. As I usually don't go into step-by-step -step detail in my videos, as I kind of develop my videos just to give you ideas, not on how to instruct you on accomplishing each step. Now, with that being said, this video is aimed at the true beginner woodworker. So not only will I be going step by step, but I will also be explaining the reasonings behind each step. Now, this is the first of a series of videos I'm developing specifically for the beginner woodworker. Now, for all you advanced woodworkers out there, and I know most of you are, these videos may be a bit below your skill level. But you know, a refresher of basic woodworking techniques never hurts. In fact, I have learned a lot from the research that I conducted in making these videos. And now, without any further ado, let's get started in building this bird feeder. Now, before we start working on the project, we need a place to do the work at. We need a workbench or a work surface. Now, not very many beginner woodworkers have a workbench to work with, but that's an easy remedy. Here, I'm just using two saw horses and a piece of three quarter inch plywood to make a platform that will be the work surface. Now, another thing that you want to do with the material that you're working with when you're sawing it, whether it be with a circular saw or even a hand saw, is you want to be able to clamp that wood down that so it won't move. And on a work surface like this, that's real easy to do. Just lay the board down and the part that you're going to be cutting, have it overhang and then clamp it down. Here I'm using some F clamps. Now it's time to actually work on the project. The first thing we want to do is mark out where we want to make the cut. Using a tape measure, or you can just use a ruler, mark out the measure mark of where you want to make the cut. Once the mark is made, come back with a speed square or a combination square, and you can mark a whole line down the face of the board. Now to cut this with a hand saw, the best thing to do is use a guide that the saw can rest up against. In this situation, the speed square makes an excellent guide. Line up the speed square right up against the line, give a little bit of room for the curve of the blade, and then you don't want the speed square to move or whatever you're using as a guide, so clamp it down. Now also, depending on how you made the mark, you usually want to keep that mark as part of the piece. So you don't want to cut through the mark, you want to cut just to the outside. Now the outside of the line is the waist area. The inside of the line would be the actual piece that you're cutting. Now I also want to state here, does it really make a difference if you cut inside, outside, or on the line? Most of the time not. Where that really comes into play is if you're measuring for something to fit into something else, then that can be an issue. Now I wanted this board to be exactly 14 inches and we're just a whisper over and that's fine. Now the next thing we want to do is to cut the board to make what I'm calling the frame of the base. Now the board that I cut that I'm going to use to make these frame pieces has a problem. There is one heck of a knot in it that actually moves. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay out my layout lines on the opposite side from where that knot is, and I'm going to cut the two inch strips from that side over. We need two long pieces to go on the long sides of the base, and two shorter pieces.
Now the combination square is the perfect tool to make these layout lines. Just set the ruler in the combination square to two inches, put a pencil up against the end of the ruler, and then just drag the combination square along with the pencil down the length of the board. Now you don't want the piece to move either, so clamp it down so it won't move. There's really no way to safely cut it with a circular saw, so use a handsaw. Now I'm using a Japanese Ryobi's handsaw, which has teeth on both edges of the blade. One set of teeth is for ripping and the other set is for cross-cutting. The cross-cutting teeth are smaller than the ripping teeth. Now, we're ripping this board down the length, so I'll be using the ripping teeth. No matter how experienced you are when using a handsaw, sometimes the hardest part is getting started. And there's one strip. Now to cut two more. Now I did pretty good on that. The waist piece of that board has the knot. The knot is not anywhere on the workpiece. Now to cut the boards to length, you could just lay out all the material and then measure it with the tape measure and then transfer that measure onto the workpiece. Or you could just lay out all the pieces and then put the piece you're gonna cut up against those, make a mark, and then make the cut. Now to cut these pieces to length, I'm gonna use the miter box. I don't have the miter box attached to the work surface because everything here is temporary. And as you can see, the miter box is moving a lot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clamp it to the work surface. Now it's still moving, but not as much. And actually what's moving is the whole work surface, not just the miter box. And after the cut is done, look at that. A perfect fit. Now it's time to cut one more long piece, and then we have that one piece left that we'll cut the two side pieces from. Now here, I'm just checking to make sure I have the combination square set. That's so the ruler is exactly at the center of the thickness of the board. You set it to where you think it is, you make a mark, flip the piece around, and make a mark again in the same spot. And if the marks overlap, it's dead center. Now I'm doing that, that's so I can mark on the pieces where the center of the thickness is for pre-drilling for the screws. Now this is one of the side pieces. There's only two screws, and I'm gonna have them an inch and a quarter in from the ends. Now I am gonna pre-drill for the screws. That's so the wood won't split. But I'm not gonna countersink it. The reason is, first of all, this is pine, so it's very soft. So the screw is going to countersink itself to a point. And the second is, this is a rustic piece. I am not concerned with it being perfect. If it's a little off, that actually will add to the rustic look of the piece. 
Now when you pre-drill, what you want to do is you want to have a scrap piece of wood where the drill is going to go through the wood. The reasoning for this is if you don't, you're going to have tear out. Having a scrap piece underneath and also sometimes where the drill enters will prevent a lot of that tear out. Now the first thing I'm assembling is one of the long frame pieces. But I want to make sure it's lined up perfectly. What I'm doing here is I do have one of the end pieces up against the base. And then I have a piece up against that that overhangs the front. So when I assemble the front piece, all I have to do is put the front piece up against that piece that is sticking out and then it will be lined up perfectly. Another thing I always do before I drive in a screw is I make sure the pieces are clamped. And even if you pre-drill for the screws, the pieces will move around if they're not clamped down. But I haven't pre-drilled into the base yet, which I also want to do. So once the piece is in place and clamped down, I'll just drill through the holes that I pre-drilled on the front piece and that will go into the base. And then it's just a matter of driving in the screws. Since the piece is also being screwed, you could release the clamps right away. But I usually don't do that. I usually allow the glue at least time to dry a little bit before I unclamp it. Now most PVA glue or wood glue, it takes about an hour for the glue to dry but it takes about 24 hours for the glue to fully cure to its maximum holding strength. Now, in applying the side pieces, there's a little bit different here. I wanna put the side pieces on before I put the other long piece. If I were to put the other long piece on, then I would have to squeeze in the side pieces in between the two long pieces. And I don't want to do that. Another thing that's a little different with the side pieces, there is one screw that needs to go through the front piece, the long piece, into the side piece. Otherwise, it's basically the same process we use when we put the long piece on. I want to drill drainage holes into each corner of the base. And I'd like to have them in the same location on each corner. The easiest way to do this is to make a template. I'm just using a scrap piece of wood I had and I'm drilling the hole, it's a one quarter inch hole, into the template. And then using the template, I'll drill the holes on each corner of the base. Now having the template also provides that you won't have as much tear out where the bit enters the wood. And I do have a piece of scrap wood underneath to prevent any tear out. Now the next board that I'm gonna cut is to make the roof posts. Now when you're using the circular saw, if you really want a straight cut, you definitely need to use a guide. But you need to be able to position the guide that so you will be cutting at your mark. To do this, the first thing we need to do is find the distance between the saw blade to the edge of the base of the saw. And then we add that measurement to make another mark of where the guide will set. Now clamp the guide down and then make the cut. You can see that the mark that I made originally for the length of the board is still there. 
there is a little bit too much on the waist side of the mark. Now I did that on purpose to show that it doesn't make that much of a difference on the majority of projects that you're gonna build. Some projects, it will make a difference, but on the majority, it won't. Now after the board was cut, I ripped these pieces the same way I did for the frame pieces with the handsaw. Now we need to mark of where we need to make the 45 degree cuts so the roof can lay flat on it. Combination square is one of the best tools for this. First thing we need to do is find the center of the width of the board and then just use the combination squares 45 degree setting and mark the lines. Now, as you can see on this piece, there is also a pretty nice knot that I really don't want. And it just so happens that it's gonna be right at the 45 degree part that's gonna be the waist. Now, before we attach it, I wanna make the hole in order to put the rope in there to hang it. I'm going to be using quarter inch rope, so I'm going to make the hole just a little bit bigger. Instead of using a quarter inch drill bit, I'm actually going to use a 5 16 inch drill bit. Now here again, I'm using a combination square to make sure that the measurements are equal from each side. And that means that the piece is centered in where it needs to go. Now I'm clamping it in first, that's so I can drill the pilot hole through into the side frame piece. Then after that's done, I'll unclamp it, apply the glue, reclamp it, and then drive the screw in. Don't forget to also put some glue on the end grain. I did use the circular saw to cut the length for the roofs. And once that's done, we need to cut the bevel on the roof pieces that's so the roof will come together at the peak. The roof supports were cut at 45 degrees, so we need to cut a 45 degree bevel on each roof piece. When you're cutting them like this by hand, even though you're using a circular saw, it's much easier to cut the bevel first and then cut them to the width that you want. If I was doing this on a table saw, I would probably do it all in one step. Now each roof piece will be attached to the roof supports with one screw each. Now it would be very difficult to clamp these pieces in but the roof actually isn't providing any real structural support or strength, so just gluing them and then screwing them is fine. Now, I did put a little block over on the other side there to help support the piece while I'm setting it up to drive in the screw. Now, I didn't drive the screw in all the way because I want to get the other side partially screwed in also before I come back and drive the screw in fully.
Now, as you can see here, I made an oops. What happened? The pieces of the roof that come to the peak are not meeting. The issue was on the roof supports. Those 45 degree cuts I made were not exactly 45 degrees. They were probably actually somewhere in the neighborhood of 46, maybe 47 degrees. But that little bit prevents the roof pieces from coming together at the peak. Is that an issue? Well, yeah, it kind of is. But does it really affect the piece? In this situation, no. And I didn't go back to try and correct it because I wanted to show you that even an experienced woodworker is never always perfect. Now, if I really wanted to make this bird feeder perfect, I would cut all the pieces either on a miter saw or on a table saw using a miter gauge where I would know that the degrees would be totally perfect. Cutting it by hand with a hand saw, you will very rarely, if ever, have it totally 100% perfect. Now the next thing I want to do is do a little sanding. Now the main thing for this sanding is just to get rid of the pencil marks. As I said earlier, I'm really looking for a rustic look on this piece. So if the pieces aren't perfect, which they're definitely not, you know that about the roof, and if the pieces aren't cut exactly 100% straight, that's not a problem with what I'm looking for and any saw marks that come through, that's fine. It just adds to the rustic look. Then the last thing to do is to attach the rope to hang it. Now, you don't have to hang this bird feeder. You can place it on top of a post. You can just put it on a table. Well, that concludes this build of this beginner's bird feeder. I hope you got something out of it, and if you did, please leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as I always say, all you woodworkers out there, just get out there and cut some wood.